Yo, what's going on everybody? It is straight out of Boston here and today I'm back for episode number 49 of my Pittsburgh Pirates franchise series here on MLB 17 this show. So we're back with game 6 of the 2021 National League Championship Series here going up against Clint Hurdle's Los Angeles Dodgers. If you missed it, I just uh, showed the little recap screen quickly. We were down 3 games to 1. We did win game 5, 5-3 over... The Dodgers and Sonny Gray, we jumped out to a 5 nothing lead in the first inning off of Sonny Gray and held on there to win Game 5 in L.A. So the series shifts back to Pittsburgh for Game number 6. And the Dodgers threatening early, but a big strikeout of Corey Seager right there by Jacob deGrom on the changeup. That's the first out of the inning. Now it's Jock Peterson. He grounds this one hard, but Esposito makes a nice play, takes it to the back himself, throws on the first in time for the 6-3 double play. And that gets DeGrom out of the inning onto the bottom half of the first. Joe Wilkerson's lineup is as follows. They will be facing off against the left-hander for Los Angeles from Mexico, Julio Urias, a 99 overall in this franchise and one of two 99 overalls on this uh, team for the Dodgers, the other being Clayton Kershaw, of course. And he would get out of the first scoreless after giving up a walk. No hits for the Pirates. It's Cody Bellinger blasting one towards center field. That ball deep. It's going to go off the fence there in center. Played by Marte quickly. He fires it in. And Bellinger is in there ahead of the tag from the first baseman, Thames. So it's a double for Bellinger with two outs in the inning. Rob Segedin up. He flies one to deep left field. Polanco back to the track in front of the wall. And the ballpark just barely holding in that fly ball. That would good, be good for out number three. So to the bottom of the second we go. This is a soft ground ball from Thames. And that's going to be good for a 4-6-3 double play. So hurry us. Working the double play ball and keeping the game scoreless into the third we go. Andrew Tolles striking out on the changeup from DeGrom. Second strikeout on that off-speed pitch for the former New York men. And then here's one of the two-seamer as Willie Calhoun goes down swinging and that would get the Grom out of the inning onto the bottom of the fourth we go Sanchez up with a man on but he strikes out looking there on the curveball and that would be good for the second out of the inning Urias would continue to put up zeros into the fifth we go still scoreless in this ball game and it's Grandal this time going down on the changeup not a great pitch there Rob Segedin up now with one out of the inning, a 2-2 count. He takes that hanging breaking ball the other way to right center field. That's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. Segedin has himself an extra base hit. Marte fires it in there, but it's going to be a one-out double. And after Uria struck out the pitcher, it's the leadoff man, Tolls, up with two outs. He flies one to left field, but this should be playable for Polanco, and it is good for out number three. So DeGrom, five scoreless innings so far. On to the bottom half of the fifth, it's DeGrom up with two outs in the inning, but he is going to go down on the heater from Urias, 93 miles an hour. Urias doesn't ramp it up there too high with the fastball, but he does have phenomenal stuff and a very good hits per nine rating. It's very tough to get one in play against this guy. Uh, I think his hits per nine rating is in the upper 90s, so that is why one of the reasons why he's a 99 overall. There, DeGrom giving up a single here in the sixth inning, and his day is going to be done. He was not too sharp despite... Going the first five scoreless, uh, gave up some hits and was not fully rested. He was four, he did have four days of rest, but for some reason his energy bar was not quite full and uh, it forced me to take him out a little bit earlier. I think he was only at 85 pitches when I took him out. Watson comes in, strikes out Seeger and Peterson. Now with two outs in the inning, it's Bellinger with a full count. Misses just barely there, according to the umpire, for ball four. With the sinker now with two outs in the inning, it's Calhoun. He goes the other way with this one. And the runners were on the move as it was a 3-2 and two count. That's going to allow the runner to score easily. Uh, that is Puig diving in there head first. So a run across for the Dodgers. They strike first one to nothing. Los Angeles takes the lead. Barrett Boyce on now to face Segedin. And he induces the ground ball to the shortstop Esposito. And that will be good for the third and final out of the inning. So to the seventh, or to the bottom of the sixth we go, I should say. Arial still out there facing the lefty Polanco. Full count. This ball hit the other way. And that will fall in front of the left fielder Tolls. Good for a single. For Gregory Polanco, now still with one out of the inning. It's Esposito up next, 3-0 count. He takes ball four, so a pair of base runners for the Pirates here in the sixth as they start to threaten. It's Diego Vina up one and one is the count. He grounds it softly, could be two to second to one. On to first, a 5-4-3 double play. Urias is out of the jam, and we are through six. LA holds on to that one to nothing lead. Boyce back out there. For the seventh, he strikes out Tolls on the Vulcan changeup right there. Filthy stuff from Barrett Boyce as he would toss a scoreless seventh. 
Now on to the bottom half. Gary Sanchez up with no outs going the other way with it. And that ball is going to fall for a single. So a leadoff base knock for Gary Sanchez. And the tying run aboard once again for the Pittsburgh Pirates after he would move over to second on the ground out from Eric Thames. It's Justin Turner striking out swinging on the pitch down and away from Urias. Two outs in the inning. After the next man would walk, Juan Cabrera is going to come up and pinch it in the pitcher spot. And it is Cabrera hitting it the other way, but a leaping catch by Cody Bellinger. That looks like it had extra bases written all over it. Could have not only tied the game, but given Pittsburgh the lead, perhaps. Instead, we will head to the eighth inning with L.A. maintaining a 1-0 lead. It's Jake Dykeman now on for the Pirates, dealing with some of these Dodger lefties. He strikes out Seager there. Now he has to face Peterson after, actually this is later in the inning, after a single. It's a walk now to Willie Calhoun, so two men on with two out. For the next man up, it is Yasmani Grandal, the one and two count. Grandal into the gap in left center field. That gets down, cut off by Polanco, but a run is going to score. And LA extends their lead to two to nothing now. So it goes from one to two as LA still with a chance to add on more here. Two outs in the inning, second knee up. And he hits one to deep right center field. And that ball is gone. And the Dodgers extend their lead. It is now five to nothing LA as they are closing in on a berth in the World Series this year. Now with a five run lead. In a decisive game six, or a potentially decisive game six, with the Pirates having their backs up against the wall, they need to strike now before the Dodgers unleash the closure. Kenley Jansen, it's Yasiel Sierra on for LA, and it's Marte getting things started the right way with a blast to right center field that goes off the wall, and it will be a leadoff double for the Pirates center fielder. Now Polanco up next, he's got a full count, and he takes strike three looking on the fastball that clips the edge of the zone right there. So Sierra's got the first out in the eighth. Now Esposito's up next. He's going to take strike three looking. That fastball looked a little bit more down than Polanco's. But Esposito doing nothing to fight it off. So Steve Geltz comes on now for the Dodgers. Two away for Diego Vina. He strikes out swinging. And we will head to the ninth now. LA still up by five. It is Geltz back out there to start out the ninth inning. Sanchez sneaking one through the 5-6 hole right there. And that is going to be a leadoff base hit. For the Pirate catcher is Eric Thames up next, dealing with a full count. Sanchez leading from first. Thames gets under this one, pops it up. Shallow right field, and that should be an easy play for Yasiel Puig. He makes it. One out in the inning. Pirates now down to their final two outs of the season, perhaps, if they cannot mount a rally here. And it's going to have to come together against Pedro Baez, who enters with one out in the inning. No Kenley Jansen yet. That ball grounded softly. Baez makes the play off the mound, throwing across his body. An unbelievable play by Pedro Baez. Two down. Austin Meadows up next. He strikes out swinging, and the Los Angeles Dodgers are moving on to the World Series. So it was the fifth straight time that the Pirates advanced to the NLCS. But it's the first time in a couple years that they fall to an opponent in the National League after winning the pennant the last couple of years. They fall to the Dodgers in the NLCS and will not be able to head back to the World Series and try to get back to the top of the baseball world as they were two years ago. Last year falling in the World Series in Game 7 to the Indians and this year falling to the Dodgers in the Championship Series. So that means we're coming back for at least one more season in the Pirates franchise. I do really want to win a second World Series and perhaps continue it even further, maybe not even playing the playoff game so much, but just doing full season simulations and quick managing the entire playoffs, perhaps doing live commentary styles like I do on OTP. I think that could be a potential uh, way we continue this series because I don't want to continue to keep playing all these playoff games every year. But anyway, that's going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'm out. Peace.